If you want to forego the upper end of the market and try something different, why not try a Chromebook? And in particular, I mean this Chromebook, the Asus Spin 713. It's cheap and cheerful, but my goodness does it hold some surprises. I would argue that there are three Chromebook styles in this device. First, there is the Google-laden, web-centric, glorified desktop browser experience that Chromebooks are known for. Then there is the ability to run Android apps, which is the second style. And I'll be honest, using touch faces on Windows 10 devices is a weird experience. You know it's a regular Windows app trying to accommodate touch as much as it can, but it often falls short. With Android apps on Chromebook, it's a totally different experience when you have a device that can flip to become a giant tablet. Suddenly that awful touch interface you've struggled using with the mouse, it suddenly springs to life because it turns out running phone apps on computers is a lot better when you can actually touch the interface. This is something Apple could and should do as it pushes iOS and macOS closer together. Then there is the third style, because underneath the consumer skin is a Debian Buster virtual machine. And that means you can install a bevy of standard desktop Linux apps, including LibreOffice, Firefox, and Audacity. Want to use Firefox on a Chromebook? Now, you could use the Android version, and then you could also run the Linux version of Firefox, or you can actually run both. And thanks to some Parallels integration, if you have the right hardware, you can even have a third version, which is the Windows version. This is a far, far cry from the image of a walled garden that often comes to mind when you think about Chromebooks. Now, the main problem I have with this device is that you cannot find it anywhere. In Australia, you can pick up an Intel Core i3 with eight gigabytes of memory and 128 gigabytes of storage for about 1,300 Australian dollars. In the States, you can get a version with a Core i7 and 16 gigabytes of memory for 1,000 US dollars, which is significantly cheaper than the less capable Australian version. Then there are the quirks you need to get your head around, such as the keyboard. The control and alt keys are massive. The meta or Windows key as most people know it is shifted to caps lock. The top row of keys, they can be used as function keys, but they're not labeled as such. And there's no delete key. Clearing out email at pace demands a proper delete key, not the alt backspace combo this device supports. But thankfully, you can plug in a traditional keyboard and all those problems disappear. Sometimes though, the trackpad simply refuses to scroll, especially on settings pages. I've yet to work out any pattern to this, but it is very annoying. And if you want premium build quality, you should probably look for some other device. For many people, owning a Chromebook will mean you need to accept having a lot of Google in your life. You can load up Linux and Android apps to skirt around some of the Googleness of this device, but at the end of the day, you're logging in with a Gmail account and everything that entails. And yet, I really like this device. Even though it only has an i3 under the hood, it's solid enough for basic tasks. The 3 to aspect ratio of the screen is delightful and I wished more laptop makers would use it. And Chrome OS actually does a good job of getting out of the way once you start to get a handle on it. There's something to the form factor of a convertible Chromebook. And for the first time in a long time, it's easy to explain why you would actually buy a convertible. It's to use the touch interface properly. And this device is cheap, especially the US version. But good luck being able to get it at too many places other than Ace's store or maybe Amazon.